dang old dash here. It kind of came with all new features with this bike. This thing's fancy. We got our normal speed and odometers and whatnot. But we got things like RPM gauge, gear indicator. This thing even tells you like your fuel mileage. You know what it doesn't have? A water temperature gauge. What the hell, man? And you can't even get mad at just Honda for this. Nobody puts these water temperature gauges on these dual sport bikes for some reason. All they give you is a little light that tells you, oops, too late. Seriously, Honda. I would literally give up the gear indicator and the RPM gauge for water temp and oil pressure. The funny thing too is the bike definitely has one. It's built into the system. How it knows to flip the fan on and tell you that the bike's overheating. The computer knows the water temperature. Couldn't get a gauge. I feel like in general, the motorcycle manufacturers are just trying to annoy us. Like Suzuki's like, oh, you see this DRZ here? Yes, yeah, Suzuki, that's very nice. Well, we're gonna make a street version, even a supermoto version. So you're gonna put lights and stuff on it? Oh yeah, and we'll also uh, decrease the power by putting in a smaller carburetor, crappier cams, lower rev limiter, a thicker head gasket, a real restrictive header. Then you got Yamaha. See how the old WR250R and X we've been making since 08? Yes, we like it very much. Are you going to update it? Not exactly. Well, then what are you doing? We're just gonna drop it all together and replace it with... Then you got Kawasaki. So we took the KLX 250, we made it a 300. Yeah, but didn't you make that bike like in the early 2000s? I was hoping you forgot about that. And then you got KTM. So we've got, I don't care, it's expensive and it'll just break, shut up. The water temperature seems like something you'd wanna keep your eye on, especially in a dirt bike. But fortunately the aftermarket does have a good solution for us. Revs of Lisbon's big sponsor on this build sent us this from Trail Tech, this is a inline water temperature gauge. It's a standalone unit. You don't need to do any wiring or anything fancy. You go to RevZilla's website, you'll find this in numerous different sizes for different size hoses that your bike may need. I'll put the link to exactly this one if you have a 300L, but you'll see this process is exactly the same on any bike. If you got an air-cooled engine, you can also still put one of these on. They got a little heat sensor thing that goes around the spark plug. You can add an RPM gauge. You can even add a full-on dash, but I don't want to replace the dash that's on there. You go to the full dash, that's a whole other big thing. We've done that before. You can go watch that on the XR. 650R we installed one of those. All we'll need for this is this guy right here and some coolant. This is the old engine ice. I'm gonna go ahead and take the opportunity to swap out what's in there for this stuff. I really like this. This is like my go-to coolant right here. The coolant that comes in your bikes is always like a real generic, uh, you know, works for all situations everywhere. This still is like good down to minus 26F, which that's not gonna happen in Texas. So let me show you real quick on the board, very quick, simple explanation of how this works, just so you have a little idea visually of what's happening before we actually dig into it. So here is an engine, okay? Coming out the top of the head is where all our hot coolant comes out of our engine, right? It goes doo -doo 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 up here and through our radiator where it cools off then comes back here into the bottom on the other side of the engine where your water pump is. We need to add this sensor in one of these hoses somewhere. Now obviously, we don't wanna add it down here on the cold side. We don't wanna know what the water temperature is after it leaves the radiator. We wanna know what the water temperature is coming off the engine at its hottest point. And we're gonna take one of our hot pipes and remove a little section. And we're gonna add a sensor, which the coolant will pass through. And there's a little probe in here with a wire that goes up to our dash. What's really nice about these Trail Tech units is they have their own little contained battery in them. So we you don't have to wire up to the bike or do anything fancy. We literally just hook this thing up and it works. The only real drawback to that is that the battery that's in it is non-replaceable. If it goes dead, which I mean, eventually it will, you have to replace the entire unit. Now, I will say I've had these for years on things and not had them go dead. So they do last for years and years and years. It's just kind of, if someone from Trail Tech sees this, please make a version of this that has just the little battery door on it. Anyways, let's get on it. Now you may want to lay down some cardboard and then you want to get something to catch the coolant in. So if we look over at our water pump, what you'll notice is you got a couple bolts on there holding the cover on and typically the most lowest one on there, or close to lowest one, you'll notice has an extra little washer in there. It's a small crush washer. And that's actually where we drain the coolant from. When we first pull this bolt off, the coolant will come out very slow. Then we'll crack the cap on top of the radiator. Then it's gonna come out rather quickly. Now, unlike oil where I'd say warm the engine up to change it, don't do this with a warm engine. You want it cold. The bolt will have a small washer on here. This is a crush washer. You should replace this every time um, or at least flip it around. We've gone down to a slight drizzle. We can go ahead and put this back in.
So we need kind of a straight-ish section to put this thing in. Now there's a bit of a straight section right here, but it's pretty short. Like if you actually look at where this thing's gonna sit inside there, that's a little cramped. You might be able to get away with that. Another thing I'm not thrilled about that is, is that this thing is actually touching the head right here. It's making contact with it, the rubber hose, which is fine, it's a rubber hose. But once this is in here, I'm gonna have a piece of metal that's gonna be rubbing against this. About here up is a fairly straight bit. I think I'm gonna put the sensor right here and I'm just gonna go and pop this hose off. It's only a slight step more, it'll save me the hard work of trying to do surgery up inside here, which I think is gonna be gonna be a pain. These hoses are gonna be a little stiff. Just a couple wiggles back and forth, get them off. Like a stiction kind of thing, and then they pop off. Yep. Lubricant. This lettering right here will sort of help us line everything back up. Pretty tough to put on. Left, right, left, right, forward, back. You can get it all the way down to where it's touching on both sides. And we get our letters lined up. We need a little twist about like that. Tighten up these clamps. You take this hose here, pop that off and put it over kind of like that for a moment. Uh, we'll re-snake it around once we have the hose up in here. Fish this thing from this side over. And ah, there we go. Power cable kind of tuck that out of the way for just a moment. Hose clamp back on and see if we can't just push this back on. If you look on here, I think you can put like a seven or 6.5 or some weird millimeter on here and like crank these down. But uh, you can get them more than as tight as you need with just an old screwdriver. If you're putting a bunch of torque in there, you can actually cut this pretty easily. That's plenty tight right there. That's not gonna leak. I'll hook this hose back up now. There's a big stack just above it of the wiring harness wires. Follow that stack, because it goes right up to the dash area. Yeah, kind of go up like that. So I've got the other cable coming up right here on the side. I've kind of checked this. It looks like the slack will all work for this. If we take this little guy, kind of tuck this wire back here. Look, that, that's just so perfect. And it's honestly where it should have been in the first place. Some double-sided tape. This will just mean that these two pieces are married together and I mean, whatever. This is the actual real 3M. A lot of people throw 3M on stuff. You gotta watch out, man. You get that right centered. You know what's gonna happen if it's not centered? I'll be always riding around looking at it going, man, it's not centered. Oh, snap. Yeah, you also have these little plugs that go where if you're not putting screws in here, plastic plugs in there to fill those in if you're not using them. Oh, yeah. Looking professional now. Make sure that's not gonna get caught in anything weird. A little button on here, and I know we can hold it. We can switch it to Celsius, and I think there's a Couple things here, oh, that's the time. I set that earlier, it's not too hard. You hold it for a minute, kind of uh, tell where you want 12 hour, 24. And I know if you hold it, I was holding it for a minute, you can get to like some high temp things. I think I set it at, like 200, so I think if it gets to 200, it'll probably start flashing. Let's fill this thing up with coolant. Squeeze these hoses and usually you can burp out some bubbles. Best thing to do is to start it with this cap open and kind of keep topping it off. Now, you don't want to sit there and do this for too long because it starts to heat up, it'll start to expand and come back out. Our temperature gauge has come up just a little bit, but let's run the bike and see if we can get this to go up now. Oh, it's getting warm. There it goes, look. The thermostat's up. Oh, it's getting warm. I got my hand on the radiator. There comes the heat. Because of where the thermostat is to our sensor, the bike looked like it was barely heating up for the longest time and all of a sudden shoots way up. That's because that thermostat's opening and suddenly getting all that heat hitting it. And then when it shuts again, you're kind of in the dark. The main reason we put it on there is so we can keep an eye on it if it starts to overheat. You know, we start getting in high heat conditions. Below the thermostat, when the thermostat's not open, if we don't know exactly what the temperature is, well, we, we just know the engine's probably a little too cold anyway. I'm gonna let this thing fully cool back down so any extra little bubbles have chased their way up to the top. If I try to pop the cap right now on top, it'll I get a whole bunch coming out. So I'll come check it later, we'll top it off. In fact, it's pretty late, so I think I'm just gonna go to bed and we'll finish that up in the morning.
That's something I like to do kind of as a final check with these bikes, give them a little shake. Lighter bikes like this, you can do that with. No difference, but hey, doesn't hurt to try. So let's slap all the body work and the seat back on. Now let's go get it out in the road and see what it's like. Okay, do, 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 did all my things. All right. What's up, guys? Yeah, that thing's cool. I passed that thing on the road. Let's check that thing out. Look at this thing. That's wild, man. It's so cool. Oh, they, yeah, look at the, the steering there. Okay, okay. That's what's up. You ever, you ever go through a drive through or anything with it? Weird yeah, anybody out? <laughs> but y'all take care. So I got distracted to talking to the van guy. I can't, hey man, you gotta say what's up when you see someone in something like that. Let's just keep our eye on it here. And uh, we'll actually should be able to tell what this thing is thermostated at. I love this though, because Here's the thing, this looks like it belongs, doesn't it? I mean, we know it's aftermarket, but like that really fits in there well. There's a little bit of tension from this against this. So, you know, we got the tape plus a little bit of tension. There's no way that thing's going anywhere. I mean, yes, if you just went up and grabbed it and ripped it off my bike, um, I would be very annoyed at you. Let me, let me just start with that. Maybe it's like a 175 degree, who knows? I mean, here's the thing. These thermostats, not always just dead on off. They do have kind of a, a window they operate in or a couple degrees. Let's let it run for a minute, see what it does. And don't take long when you're sitting still for that thing to get hot. Oh yeah, there it is. See, I set that to come on at 200. Obviously 200 is not actually overheating. I just want that to kind of catch my attention. That's what that little H means. It's like a warning, like, hey, you're getting hot. Boiling over is usually close to like 240, 250. You want to start kind of being concerned. You start seeing, oh, there it goes. There goes the fan. All right, let's see if it goes down. Look at that, that fan is good. That's a strong fan. You know, upper upper 60s would help. Oh yeah, look, it turned off right when that thing hit 200. All right, let's get moving and see what it does though. As nice as the fan is, the fan's probably only equivalent of like going a couple miles an hour. And it's only over one little spot over the radiator. Oh, we're all the way back into the 170s. Everything is good. This modification is basically the same on any bike you have. Should be able to knock it out in like an hour or two. If you've been enjoying this series and you want to help out and get something cool out of it, you can join the Patreon. It's just $1 a month and you get a uncensored extended version of this video. It comes out early. You can join the Discord. Well, I'm very, very active and chat with people till one, two in the morning on a regular basis like an idiot and then feel very sleepy the next day. I need to quit doing that. <laughs> Oh, what y'all doing? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! The cops will never believe I don't know these guys. <laughs> oh, 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 don't run you over. <laughs> yeah. You want that on YouTube? I'll tell you, what's your name? Mason. Mason? All right, Mason, take care, man. I'm gonna put that on YouTube. That's what's up. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Y'all take care.